channel Knowledge Star Continuous Knowledge Excellence. My name is Karuna Singh. In this video, we will get to know about the academic and scientific writer's blueprint. Now, our expert Dr. Gregory David Olivier, who is renowned professor, professional academic editor and trainer, will explain you in detail about this topic. So, to get complete information, watch full video without skip. In order for you to start your scientific or your academic paper, you need to write your problem statement. So I'm not referring to an article which you will find in a wildlife magazine. This is a scientific problem which we wish to address in an academic way because we, we would like to bring about change. So this is not writing a narrative. This is not description per se, rather a mixture, a melange of different styles of writing which will fall into place if you follow the sections which I outlined to you. The problem statement is where you will begin. You, you would have to explain the cause and effect. With a, a well-written problem statement, now you may begin. Next, you are going to write your research questions. Write down your questions. You can paraphrase them at a later stage. Purchase a pen and a small journal. Now, this sounds ridiculous in this day and age that we actually uh, have to write things down on pieces of paper. If you wish to jot your notes down onto a tablet, that is, is your prerogative. All I'm saying is you need to take notes because it's step number four of our blueprint. You will read the relevant literature. And this is most important as you're reading and deciding that you're going to use some of this information in your paper, you need to note the sources in your journal. You can also, well, I urge you to copy and paste the interesting parts of what you've read, which you, wish to, which, which you would like to use in the future. You simply copy and paste it into a separate document and you could entitle it chapter two or lit review whatever you like. Later on, you're going to paraphrase what you've copied and pasted into your own words. Now, you plan your timeline and your budget. These are simply estimates. This could change. This will help you not only to get your proposal through if you need funding, but simply as a guideline for yourself. After all, think about it. Are you being paid a fortune to write this academic paper? Is it not going to eat into your time? Is it not going to make you forget about your, your work, perhaps? So how much time can you actually devote to the research and the writing? And if you rush it, if you are in a hurry, you will make mistakes and you will not produce an effective paper. And after all, this is what the workshop is about. Wait, wait, wait. Are you worried about your project? Training, dissertation, internship, don't think too much because Nanoscience and Technology Consortium, in short NSTC, is giving you a golden opportunity to do the same tasks. NSTC also conducts workshop on amazing topics. So if you want to register in the workshop, the registration link is given in the description box below or you may go to the website www.nanoschool.in where you can easily enroll in the workshops. So just check it out right now. Writing an effective paper. Now, point number six of your blueprint. Those academics who to try to do this alone end up failing in some way. Yes, perhaps you do get your paper published in some obscure journal, but are you really reaching the audience that you would like to? Are you reaching the broader audience? Are you perhaps embarrassing yourself with your writing? This is why I urge you, find people who are going to help you, people who you can count upon. In parentheses at the end of point six, you say you, you, you think they will. If you have 10 people who say they are going to help you, they are there for you, they will give you their support, you can count on maybe two people who are actually going to spend their time. It's very easy to say, yes, I will help you, but when it comes to that obtaining the help from from these individuals they will soon leave you in the lurch they have their own agendas so try to find people who are reliable that when the time comes they will actually take the time to read what you've written and give you advice now point number seven is extremely important because you need to 
not only choose your methodology, but you need to test it in a pilot study. It is possible to go ahead without testing your, your instruments. I would not advise that. Unless you are going to use other instruments that have been used before and you have support from within your support group to do so, I would suggest develop your own instruments, even if you use perhaps an instrument or two from an, another academic's research, but add in one or two of your own instruments or perhaps a different way of using the instruments in order to make it individual to yourself. So you will test it, hopefully, or it's hopefully you will use an instrument which is completely foolproof. It has been tested already. And then point number eight, when you are satisfied with the instruments and the data, conduct your research. So in other words, you're looking at the answers. What kind of answers are you getting from this data? Are these answers that are going to prove your point, which is why that your, your problem statement and your research questions are imperative. That is where you, where you start. If your data does not prove your point, if your data does not hold up your theory, then your instrument is not serving its purpose. Please remember point nine, collect and store the data, whether it's on paper, whether it's interviews, MP4 files, videos, whether it's notes that you've taken when, when you're in the field, do not destroy anything for at least five years. If somebody wishes to challenge your results and your findings, and you, you never know, we do not know our future. Future is uncertain. So in case of this event, you keep your, your raw materials, your raw data, However you store it is up to you, but store it and do not discard it for at least five years. Play it safe. Number 10, you're going to write your first draft. Now, in order to write your first draft, you will work with the data and your research questions and refer again to the problem statement. The way to approach your academic paper or your scientific paper is write the methodology and the results sections first. If you had a proposal, you would have written the methodology already. So now it's sim simply a question of adding what you have written already into your document. Just be aware of the tense, the verbs for tense. So you, you have a method of, of research and you have results. Now the results will form the basis of your argument. Without solid results, you have no argument. Therefore, you don't have a scientific paper. You have a paper, it's, but it's ineffective. Following that, next, you will write your framework section. Now, your framework section, we call this your theoretical and conceptual framework. You will show how your ideas connect with the ideas that you have found in the literature. Following that, you write your discussion section. So your discussion section will contain your arguments, the clever arguments that expose opposing points of view, and then you refer to your, your data and the way that you will write about your data, because in your discussion section, you are not going to show tables and many numbers, rows of figures and statistics. You are simply going to refer to a few points which are important in your data and discuss them and use them as evidence. And as I mentioned before, in your discussion section, you would also refer to points from the literature review to back up your point, to give your point more power, more strength, make yourself more credible. Then you will write your conclusion. And lastly, your abstract. So you will do everything first and then write your abstract because your abstract is a summary of what you've done. So you cannot write that first. That is what you write last. Number 12, you will proofread everything yourself before you share it with your peers. This is logical. I hope you liked this video. Here, I would like to give you an important information that Nano Science and Technology Consortium or NSTC organized the nanotechnology workshops on very, very interesting topics. Also, I would like to tell you about the initiatives of NSTC in which you can also be a part of. Mentorship. Patent commercialization, joint product development, research projects, consultancy services, 
nano materials for your research projects, training programs or customized training programs, workshops or customized workshops. So yes, that's all. And yes, there is one more thing that if anybody wants the recording of the previous video, then they can contact us on info at the rate NSTC dot in. Further, if you want to enroll in the upcoming workshop, so you can go to the website www.nanoschool dot in. Further, I would like to tell you that if you want to see these type of videos on this channel, so please do subscribe to the channel and please do comment. We will definitely reach out to you. Thank you. For more updates, subscribe to our channel, click the links shown on the screen to stay connected.